In the video today, some people whose achievements are so uninspiring that you'll probably shake your head in wonder at how they possibly could have seen the task through to the end. Number 10. William Schmidt's Tunnel it sounded so practical at the time. In 1906, William Schmidt staked 24 mining claims out in the El Paso Mountains to help him transport valuable ore in less time. Working alone with nothing more than a hammer, pickaxe, handheld drill, and some dynamite, he spent the next 32 years digging a 2,087-foot-long tunnel through solid rock. The tunnel very nearly collapsed on him time and time again, though he tended to just shrug it off like an annoying gnat. By 1920, the tunnel had lost any practical value when new roads and railroads were put in, but Schmidt still went at it. You can talk about dogged determination all you want, but clearly the real reason was one that all of us guys can relate to. He was making the world's most literal man cave. Number 9. James John's Newspaper just as a note here, there aren't actually any existing images of it, so here's a picture of an old newspaper. Born in 1797, James Johns was a Vermont native who tried to make his way as a writer but couldn't get anything published. So he launched his own newspaper called the Vermont Autograph. Because he didn't initially have a printing press, he taught himself how to write in a style that was amazingly close to print type. In his 30s, he finally got that elusive printing press but never bothered to use it since he was basically his own printer anyway. This was a bit of a mistake. Each issue of his newspaper took 12 hours to write, so its circulation never went higher than maybe six people. Curiously, that would actually be the exact number of people who would read it today. Number 8. Robert Coates, Britain's Most Successful Comedian Coming from a privileged background, Coates financed his own productions of Shakespeare's plays and other classics from 1810 to 1816. He performed to sell out audiences and was recorded as making people laugh so hard that it physically hurt them. But of course there is a rub and that's that he was trying to do straight drama instead of attempting comedy. This probably was because he wore diamond studded outfits, a hat with ostrich plumes, a pink silk scarf and a sky blue cape. He but also randomly ad lib without warning and sometimes deliberately just drop character. Now, you might think that everyone found this funny back then, but literally at points he needed police protection because people were constantly threatening him and throwing stuff at him when he was on stage. Number 7. Jeff McKissack's Theme Park In 1956, former postal worker McKissack got a permit to build a 5,000 square foot park in Houston, Texas. Like Schmidt before him, he did it almost entirely by himself. Huge amounts of it came from junkyard scrap or litter that he found scattered about. He also had no driver's license, so he had to haul everything around on a bicycle. And what's the best part of all of this? The whole thing was meant to be a tribute to oranges and a ridiculously exaggerated sense of how healthy they are. McKissack posted signs that said, be smart, drink orange juice, and drop maps of where oranges are grown in the United States on scrap metal. He finally opened the park in 1979 to almost no public interest. It wasn't until after his death when his friends would book bands to perform there, such as the fledgling ZZ Top, that the place became a successful tourist trap. Number 6. David Wimps Counting you probably wouldn't expect a person who runs a lawn mowing service in Riverton, Wyoming to become a media darling. Wimp did so in about the simplest, quietest way possible. He wrote down numbers, one at a time, on pieces of paper. Then he switched to counting with electrical counter printouts in 1982. He counted to over a million, got bored with counting up, and started back the other way, and then started counting up again. By the time he got national coverage, he had counted to over 3.7 million. Number 5. Mobin Khan's Driving Now, before we get into this one, apparently there are no photos available of Mobin Khan, so here's a picture of a random Indian guy. Mobin Khan is an Indian driving instructor, one so amazing at driving that he has driven for thousands of kilometers at a time, in reverse, the entire way. He was recognized in 2009 by the Indian government for driving 2,500 kilometers backwards, but has yet to be recognized by the Guinness Book of World Records. Maybe it's for the best, though. It's one of those records that you don't really want people to keep trying to break. Number 4. Lucy Pearson's Collection it's one thing to have an extremely large collection, but how many of us are so dedicated to it that we have a whole village named after us? That's the case with Lucy Pearson of Pearsonville, California. She is famous for having 80,000 hubcaps in her home. Sure, it's a community of only 27 people, but you know, those 27 people constantly live in the shadow of her world record. Number 3. St. Simeon's Platform 
In the very early years of Christianity, one of the most distinguished saints was named Simeon. Early on, he was extremely fanatical and was barred from being trained for the clergy at age 15. He went to Syria, went into Hermitage, and from there became what was then world famous. His view of Christianity wasn't so much about blessing the meek, being charitable, or treating the body as God's temple. Nope, he was into abusing himself in all sorts of ways, like circling ropes around himself and tightening them until he bled. He added on to the acts by having his eponymous platform built 10 feet high to isolate himself from everyone else while he wore animal skins and continued abusing himself. Not only did he somehow achieve sainthood, he was at the time actually contacted by Roman emperors for consultation. Number 2. A Plenty Wingo's Walk if you thought Melvin Kahn set himself a hard goal, consider Wingo's 8,000-mile backward walk that started in Fort Worth, Texas in 1931 and continued until 1932. His rationale was simple. He had heard a couple of teenagers in the restaurant where he washed dishes complain that everything had already been done. It then sort of popped into his brain that no one had walked around the earth backwards. His trip cost him 13 pairs of shoes and a wife who divorced him while he was away. Wingo was kept from completing his odyssey after being held up in Istanbul, Turkey. He apparently lost heart there and just decided to write a book about his experience instead of actually completing the experience. Number 1. Ashrita Furman, World Record Holder for World Records Holding the most world records sounds so awesome. It's like you're not just one of the best, but you're the best at being the best. But then you learn about Ashrita Furman and see his method and realize nothing will ever be awesome ever again. You see, since 1979, Ashrita Furman has been setting records in activities so lame that no one would ever be caught in public trying to beat his numbers. Such feats include fastest mile on a hoppity hop, Biggest pencil to sign name with and largest hula hoop. His best one by far is most jumping jacks at 27,000, and while the guy is clearly something of an athlete at an advanced age, it's hard to shake the vibe that his life is like the worst Jim Carrey movie that was never made. So I really hope you found that video entertaining. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe. If you're looking for something else, why not check out our other channel called Biographics? Find a link to that on the screen now. And as always, Thank you for watching.